Chapter 22. Gregor opened his mouth to scream, No! Just as Rip Red's eyes flickered, Henry was behind the rat. All Rip Red could have seen was the expression on Gregor's face, but it was enough. In the split second Henry drove the blade down, Rip Red flipped onto his back and slashed his terrible claws. The sword cut across the rat's chest as Rip Red tore a deep gash along Henry's arm. About the time Gregor's no had actually left his mouth, and his yell woke up most of the party. Rip Red rose up on his hind legs, bleeding, furious, and terrifying to see. Henry looked weak and small by comparison. He could barely lift his sword with his injured arm. Luxa and Aurora were instantly airborne. Ares drew straight for the rat. But Gregor got there first. He sprang between Rip Red and Henry with his arms spread out. Stop, he cried. Stop! Unbelievably, everybody paused. Gregor guessed this was the first time any of them had ever seen someone try to come between a fighting rat and a human. Their second of hesitation gave him just enough time to blurt out, Anybody who wants to kill anybody else has to go through me first. Not particularly poetic, but it had the desired effect. No one wanted Gregor dead. Everyone knew the warrior was essential to the quest. Move, Overlander, the rat will kill us all! ordered Luxa, preparing to dive at Rip Red. The rat was merely trying to sleep. Believe me, pup, if I'd wanted to kill you, we wouldn't be having this conversation, said Rip Red. Do not waste your lies on us, Nar, said Luxa. Do you think we would believe your word over one of our own? It's true. He's telling the truth. He didn't start it. It was Henry, Gregor shouted. He was trying to kill Rip Red in his sleep. Everyone turned to Henry, who spat back at them. Yes, and he would be dead now if it were not for the Overlander. Now there was confusion. Gregor could tell by the look on Luke's face she hadn't known about Henry's plan. She'd assumed Rip Red had attacked first. She didn't know what to do next. Stop, Luke, please, said Gregor. We can't afford to lose any more questers here. We have to stick together. He'd made up the word questers on the spot, and it seemed right. Luxa slowly descended to the ground, but stayed on Aurora's back. Ares hovered uncertainly in the air. Gregor wondered if the bat had known about Henry's plan. But if he had, why weren't they attacking together in the air? It was so hard to tell what the bats were thinking. Gregor noticed for the first time that Temp and Tick were literally standing over the sleeping boots, shielding her. Gox still perched in the makeshift wedge she built at bedtime. It's over. Gregor said with an authority he didn't know he possessed. Put down your sword, Henry. Rip Red, just, just sit down. It's over. Would they listen to him? Gregor didn't know, but he was determined to hold his ground. It was a long, tense moment. Then Rip Red lowered his lips back over his bared fangs and broke into a laugh. I will say this for you, warrior. You do not lack boldness. Henry let his sword clatter to the ground, which was no big concession since Gregor saw he could barely hold it. Or treachery, said Henry softly. Gregor narrowed his eyes at Henry. You know, where I come from, we don't think much of someone who sneaks up and stabs a person in their sleep. He's not a person. He is a rat, said Henry. If you cannot make the distinction, you may surely count yourself among the dead. Gregor held Henry's cold gaze. He knew that later he would think of several tough things he should have said to Henry, but he couldn't think of any now. Instead, he turned to Luxa and said gruffly, We'd better patch them up. They weren't much better at first aid than they were at cooking, but Luxa at least knew what ointment to use. Gox turned out to be the biggest help of all. She spun a special web and instructed them to press handfuls of the silky threads into the injuries. In minutes, the bleeding on both Henry's arm and Rip Red's chest had stopped. While Gregor patted extra layers of silk into Rip Red's matted fur, the rat muttered, I suppose I ought to thank you. Forget about it, said Gregor. I only did it because I need you. He didn't want Rip Red thinking they were friends or anything. Did you? I'm glad, said Rip Red. I thought I detected in you a sense of fair play. Most dangerous in the Underland, boy. Gregor wished everybody would just shut up about what was dangerous to him in the Underland. The whole place was one big minefield. He ignored Rip Red's comment and continued to apply the spider webs. Behind him, he heard Luxa whisper to Henry, Why did you not tell us? To keep you safe, Henry whispered back. Safe, thought Gregor. Right. Even if he got back to the Overland, Gregor didn't think he'd ever feel safe again. You must not do this again, Henry, he heard Luxa say. You cannot take him alone. 
I could have if the overlander had not interfered, said Henry. No, the risk is too great, and we may have need of him, said Luxa. Let the rat be. Is that an order, your highness? asked Henry with a slight edge to his voice. If that is the only way you will heed my advice, then yes, said Luxa earnestly. Hold your sword until we better understand our condition. You speak most exactly like that old fool Vicus, said Henry. No, I speak as myself, said Luxa, stung, and as one who wished us both to survive. The cousins realized their voices had risen to the point where everyone could hear them, so they stopped talking. In the silence, Rip Red resumed gnawing on the bone he'd been carrying around. The scraping grated on Gregor's nerves. Do you think you could stop that, please? he asked. No, actually, I can't, said Rip Red. Rat's teeth continue to grow our entire lives, which necessitates gnawing to keep them at a manageable length. If I didn't gnaw frequently, my lower teeth would soon grow through the top of my skull and puncture my brain, and alas, kill me. Glad I ask, said Gregor, slapping a piece of web on Rip Red and leaning back against the cavern wall. So, now what? Well, since obviously no one's going back to Dreamland, we may as well make tracks for your father, said Rip Red, rising to his feet. Gregor went to get boots. As soon as he touched her, he felt alarmed. Her face was burning like a furnace. Oh no, he said helplessly. Hey, hey Boots, hey little girl. He gently shook her shoulder. She whimpered something in her sleep but didn't wake up. Luxa, something's wrong. Boots is sick, he said. Luxa laid her hand on Boots' forehead. She is fevered. She has caught some pestilence from the land of the rats. Pestilence. Gregor hoped that wasn't as serious as it sounded. Luxa dug through the vials Solove had left with him and held one up uncertainly. I think this is for fever? Rip Red took a sniff and wrinkled his nose. No, that kills pain. He buried his snout in the pack and rooted out a blue glass bottle. You need this one. Give her only a few drops. She cannot handle more at her size. Gregor was reluctant to give her any of the strange medicine, but Boots was so hot. He slipped a few drops between her lips and thought she swallowed it. He tried to lift her up to put her in the pack, and she moaned in pain. He bit his lip. She can't ride with me. It hurts her. They laid Boots on a blanket on Tim's back. Gox spun a web to secure her to the shell. Gregor felt sick with worry. An eight will be left when we count up the dead. He couldn't lose Boots. He just couldn't. He had to get her home. He should have left her in regalia. He should have never agreed to the quest. If anything happened to Boots, it would be his fault. The gloom of the tunnel soaked through his skin and into his veins. He wanted to scream out in pain, but the darkness choked him. He would have given almost anything for just one glimpse of the sun. The party limped along slowly, painfully, suspiciously, preoccupied by the worries they all shared, but no one spoke aloud. Even Rip Red, by far the most hardened of the group, seemed to hunch down under the weight of the situation. This general despair was just one of the reasons they didn't detect the score of rats until they were almost on top of them. Even Rip Red could not distinguish the smell of rats in a place reeking of rats. The bats couldn't sense them in the narrow tunnel as they approached the increasingly loud river. The humans could see nothing in the gloom. Rip Red led them out of the tunnel into a huge cavern divided by a deep canyon. A wide, powerful river ran through it. A swinging bridge spanned the river. It must have been made with the combined efforts of several species in better times. Thick silk woven by the spiders supported thin slats of stone cut by the humans. They must have needed the bat's flying abilities, too, to build such a bridge. When Gregor shone his flashlight up to see how the bridge was secured, he caught sight of them. Twenty rats sitting motionless on the rocks above the opening to the tunnel right above their heads, waiting. Run, Rip Red yelled, and literally snapped his teeth at Gregor's heels. Gregor stumbled forward onto the bridge and began to cross, his feet slipping on the worn stone slats. He could feel Rip Red's hot breath on his neck. Henry and Luxa were flying ahead of him, jetting across the river. He was halfway across when he remembered Boots wasn't on his back. She had been with him so continually on the journey, he had begun to think of them as inseparable. But now, she was on temp. Gregor turned abruptly to go back. Rip Red, as if anticipating just this move, spun Gregor forward and snagged the backpack with his teeth. 
Gregor felt himself lifted into the air as Rip Red ran flat out for the far side of the river. Boots, yelled Gregor, boots! Rip Red moved like lightning. As he reached the opposite bank, he dumped Gregor on the ground and joined Luxa and Henry, who were frantically trying to hack through the silk rope supporting the bridge. Gregor aimed his flashlight and saw that Gox was about three quarters of the way across. Behind her, carrying his sister, Temp struggled along now with Boots. Between Boots and the twenty killer rats that were now streaming across the river, there was only Tick. Boots! Gregor screamed and dove back for the bridge. Rip Red's tail caught him across the chest and flung him back on the ground, knocking the wind from him. He gasped, trying to fill his lungs, then got to his knees and crawled toward the bridge. He had to help her. He had to. Gox zipped off the bridge and began to snap the threads with her jaws. No, coughed Gregor. My sister! He pulled up to his feet just in time to catch another blow from Rip Red's tail. The roaches were within ten feet of the bank when the rats caught up with them. There was no discussion between them. It was as if the bugs had worked out this whole scenario long ago. Temp put on a burst of speed for the end of the bridge, and Tick turned to face down the army of rats alone. As they bounded at her, Tick flew directly into the face of the lead rat, causing it to startle back in surprise. Until that moment, Gregor hadn't even realized the roaches had wings. Maybe the rats didn't know either. But it didn't take them long to recover. The lead rat sprang forward and crushed Tick's head in its jaws. Temp collapsed on the bank just as the bridge gave way. Twenty rats, the leader still holding Tick in its teeth, plunged into the river below. As if this sight wasn't horrific enough, the water churned as enormous piranha-like fish surfaced and fed on the screaming rats. <laughs>